This third video is covering the third minor skill and the last minor skill leading up to completing the square and that is dealing with this idea of a perfect square trinomial. A perfect square trinomial is any factorable trinomial and actually that term is very loosely applied in completing the square with two identical binomial factors. Now we'll get back to this notation in a minute and what that's saying. Okay, but I want to give a few examples of this. So for instance, let's say we had x squared plus 8x plus 16. This is a perfect square trinomial because if we look, that will factor into two identical binomial factors because the numbers that multiply to 16 and add to 8 are both 4's. It's 4 and 4, which means that I can write this as x plus 4 quantity squared. So that is the binomial squared, which makes this trinomial a perfect square. Now it's worth noting this notation up here should make sense if we look at this example that we just had. B is 8. So half of B would be 4, x plus B over 2 quantity squared. That would be x plus 4 quantity squared. That's what we have over here. And this negative B over 2 squared over here, B over 2 squared, would be 4 squared or 16. So that, mat that notation is simply stating that that's the way these work every single time. So let's look at a few others. If we had x squared minus 12x plus 36, that would be a perfect square trinomial because it would factor into two binomial factors. The numbers that multiply to 36 and add to negative 12 are both negative 6's. So that would factor into x minus 6 quantity squared, making that a perfect square trinomial. This is a relatively simple idea for any even value of b. It will get a little bit more difficult when we deal with odd values of b and when we deal with trinomials that have an a value other than 1. But that is left to another video. So let's practice the last minor skill in this process, and that is actually completing a perfect square trinomial. So these problems are going to come in the format x squared plus bx equals something. And what we're supposed to do is divide b by 2, which will give us b over 2. And then we're supposed to square that value. So square b over 2 to fill in the blank. So we're going to square that and write it in the blank. b over 2 squared. Now in the process, we will figure out that this value, b over 2, is what's going to go into our binomial squared when we factor the left side of the equation. So the directions here in this section say find the number that completes the square. In other words, they want you to fill in this blank at the end of the trinomial. Then they want you to write this problem as a binomial squared. So this process is very, very simple. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through and we're going to basically insert a blank on each line. And we'll only do the first three for now. Okay? What we do is we take the 6 and we divide by 2 to fill in the blank. That would be 3. Then we are going to square that 3 to get 9. That completes the trinomial and writes out the binomial squared. So 10 divided by 2 is 5. 5 squared is 25. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 1 squared is 1. Hopefully this makes sense. Now, the same thing applies when b is negative. That doesn't change anything. So 14 divide, negative 14 divided by 2 is negative 7. Negative 7 squared is still positive 49. So it doesn't matter whether this number is negative or positive. This number is always positive. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 squared is positive 4. Negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 squared is positive 
36. That is going to complete our last minor skill, completing a perfect square trinomial.